I'm Brian Batista. My friends call me Bunny and thank you for joining me. Since my last episode, a lot of things have changed. It's been about a month and I've grown this whole beard. Uh, if you watch my episodes, you'll know that since the last episode and I returned from Portugal, my camera equipment and computer were stolen. Now, up until this point, it's been difficult, but I have scrounged enough money together where I've bought myself a new laptop in order to edit these videos. And I borrowed a camera. Thank you, Quick Draw Animation Society, for the use of the camera for this episode. This is episode 31, and I'm calling it Fresh Start. And you'll see, maybe in the blurry background, that the fresh start that I'm speaking of is creating and stretching and priming some new canvases behind. And I've been using something very interesting that I've been saving up for an opportunity like this. So, if you haven't already subscribed, subscribe to my videos below and take a look at what's going on in my basement this week. My basement has been transformed into this week's church of creativity. I'm lucky that my roommate's out of town, but he's also an artist, so he really understands me and my need to take over a room like this to work on a project. And it's Thanksgiving weekend, so not only do I have time, but I also have a lot of things to be thankful for. I am fortunate in that classes are beginning this semester, and I am teaching a master painting course at the Alberta College of Art and Design. And on the first day of this course, I teach how to build proper ground and support for your painting. Well, after the class, I decided to bring all the gear home, and I rolled out a drop cloth, and I built some new supports and stretched some canvas. I had some gesso that I needed to use up and halfway through the project I realized that I needed to go buy some more so I ran down to Swinton's and picked up a gallon of pretty good quality gesso which we'll call the side which is what I'm using as my first coat to prime it. Back in the day they used to use rabbit skin glue and the point of this step is really to protect the cotton fibers of the canvas from the more caustic materials that you're going to be applying when you paint. After that, you apply the ground. And the ground that I've been saving up is really exciting. I talk a lot about the safety and health hazards of materials, and I, I fully admit to being one of those persons that uh, do as I say, uh, not as I do, but I am really changing my practice to be a lot healthier. So I've donned my coveralls, I have gloves, and a respirator, which might be a little bit more extreme than necessary for what I'm painting with. And what I'm painting with, I was uh, given by a student because I can't stop talking about the benefits of lead white. So I'm doing oil priming. Lead white, right on the front of the label, this stuff says poison. The ingredients of lead white are linseed, stand oil, calcium carbonate, mineral spirits, and lead carbonate. And the ingredients, so this, the stand oil is the body, the carrier, or what we call uh, a vehicle. The calcium carbonate, which has an adhesive property uh, that could be made from chalk, ground eggshells, or marble dust. The mineral spirits, turpentine, well that's our thinner, and that kind of breaks down the stand oil body and helps the paint flow. And the last thing is the lead carbonate, which is the white ground or, or the pigment. Now, unless you're ingesting lead, it really isn't uh, as dangerous as people make it out to be. We, uh, I grew up in a time when there was lead and gasoline and lead paint on all the walls. We know a lot better today, so we can act accordingly. But it also can make getting these materials difficult. Now this Frederick's lead white had probably been sitting in someone's garage for years. So I had to reconstitute it by breaking it down back into its components and mixing it together again. And I made a beautiful slurry. Now lead white, when I'm first painting it, does look a little bit yellow. But as it dries over time, it is a beautiful white. Something that I didn't know about lead white, which we also call flake white. Now for me, flaky people drive me a little bit crazy, but lead white or flake white happens to be the most flexible. So in a way, I'm looking now at 
my definition of flaky. I'm thinking, geez, you know, flaky is actually kind of a good thing because it means that you are flexible. Thank you for joining me and seeing some of the progress. I hope you join me again for the next episode. Ciao for now.